Here we go. Um, so welcome to our today's Azure Rosenheim meetup. Um, thanks for joining um, in our Zoom call as well as um, on YouTube. Um, so if you have any questions, um, just unmute, ask them, ask them here in the Zoom chat or also ask them on, on the YouTube. So we will um, make sure to um, yeah give them over to, to fill in this presentation later. Yeah, today's uh, meetup is about Chaos Engineering with Azure Cast Studio. So this will be a two-part series. Um, first one today, more on the basics around cars uh, engineering. And the second one later in April, April um, Phil will also do some, some demos with Azure Car Studio and uh, doing a, a deep down on that one. Okay, Anila, next slide, please. So who we are, my name is uh, Nico Meisenzahl. Uh, I'm head of DevOps Consulting and Operations at WhiteTag. And uh, yeah, with me today, uh, I have Philip um, who is doing the presentation. So um, over to you, Philip, for a short introduction. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm Philip. <clears throat> I'm also working at White Duck. I'm a senior Kubernetes DevOps engineer at GitLab Hero, have having some um, Kubernetes certificates, and yeah, my daily work is around Azure um, Kubernetes for sure, and um, Chaos Engineering or Terraform stuff like this. Yeah, short housekeeping. Um, so as you already know, this meetup is streamed on YouTube. Um, so on the people on the YouTube side, if you like to participate, asking questions, unmuting, talking with us um, afterwards, uh, feel free to hop over to our Zoom uh, meeting. You will find all the details on our Azure Meetup Rosenheim meetup page. Um, but you can also stay, of course, uh, of course, stay on the YouTube side and we will also monitor the comments over there. Yeah, and with this, um, I would like to hand over to Phil uh, for today's topic. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Nico. Um, uh, before we start with the introduction to Chaos Engineering, um, we will do a short um, roundup of Azure News because it's our first uh, meetup this year. So we have March. So we, we picked some of our um, interesting things, which, we, which was released the last month. Then we do the introduction as Chaos Engineering uh, to Chaos Engineering, as I said. Um, we would take a look at the key principles of Chaos Engineering. And then we will do the introduction of the Azure Chaos Studio in this series. And the next series, the next part, which is in, I think, two or three weeks, will be more hands-on. Today is more like the, the basic um, basic introduction of all, this, all the steps and all the stuff we need, because uh, doing it in one session would be too blown up. So that's why we decided to split it, uh, split it a little bit. Then let's start with the Azure news. Um, next slide, please. Yes. Okay. And yeah, this is a, a, a list of our top picks, let's say. Um, the Azure monitor integration for or with Azure container apps is generally available. So it was released, I think, in March. So um, yeah, it was March. And um, yeah, I think the, the all the metrics and the Azure monitor integration was preview. But now the content apps team or the monitoring team decided to make it GA. So do we have an integration with the log analytics workspace and yeah, all the stuff we need here. Um, for uh, the Azure Creator Service, we now have the container log v2 schema in Azure Monitor available. This schema uh, supports also this new basic log schema, which is a more uh, cost efficient way of storing logs. So uh, when you have an Azure container, a Kubernetes service, sorry, um, you know mostly the, the, the high value or what, what is really expensive where the logs. And with this new log v2 scheme or schema, um, there's some improvements um, which is well introduced to make some cost saving. You have a single table. You don't have to do this cross joint with all the tables from the container logs. And the, so, Please uh, check it out. I think maybe we can yeah, make a blog post or something about it. So yeah. then we have the uh, Azure Firewall in the basic. So this is addressed on more like small and medium sized companies, which don't need the high schools and yeah, can do the, uh, the Azure Firewall to a better price than using the other schools from the firewall. So this is a really good thing for the Azure Firewall. Um, also uh, generally available is now the Azure load testing, uh, which is a uh, yeah some some other other things we can do for testing your applications than cloud engineering. So you can you can test a lot on the application. Uh, finally, also a long uh, awaited feature I think is the um, 
active uh, Azure Active Directory authentication for the Postgres SQL database Flex server. So now instead of local users, we can use um, AID users, service principles, managed identities. So this is a good uh, thing, which um, did go GA, uh, GA in the last weeks. We have also uh, immutable vaults for Azure backup. Um, immutable, and it means um, you, you can't update it. So the, when a backup is there, it can't be modified. It, can, uh, it has protection against ransomware attacks. It has, the, um, uh, um, sorry, um, it has protection against deleting backups. Um, also for, for example, when the retention time is up, the, the, the backup will be deleted. This is not happening with the immutable vaults. So this is a good thing, which also did go GA in March. And we have a change in the Azure Kubernetes service pricing tiers. Um, I don't know if many people know there was a free tier and there was a paid tier of the um, API server. So the managed data plane, which is by Azure. And when you edit the, uh, or opt into the paid tier, you get a, a service level agreement or a SLA on this um, API server. And uh, Microsoft decided as not many people maybe know this, this feature exists, the SLA feature to rename it to standard and free. So I think the standard will be the default if I'm not uh, wrong and you have to opt into free so that um, yeah, more customers um, will use the standard and opt into the SLA and have a better um, experience or better uh, um, service agreement on the API server from Kubernetes. Okay, then let's start with um, chaos engineering. Before we uh, take a look at what chaos engineering really is, let's take a, a look at the history of uh, chaos engineering. The first, let's say, documented uh, thing, what happening was that I think Jesse Robbins at Amazon created their game days. This was an initiative that uh, uh, purposely um, created major failures on, on the website. So he was in the, I think, Azure uh, Amazon website team and they injected major faults in the website and tried to increase the reliability and the resilience of the website. This was inspired by firefighter training, where also the firefighters trained like how to uh, how to uh, what's it? how to <laughs> say the lesson of English, my God, how to um, put out a fire, let's say. And this is, was inspired by this. Then Google later came up with the um, with the Dirt program in the, from the SREs of Google that called um, disaster recovery testing, and it has the same purpose. They um, intentionally in, in the case. Uh, instigated failures in critical um, system components and processes and yeah, adopted the, the, the outcome and uh, tried to uh, increase the re resilience. Mm. Then uh, <clears throat> 2010, 2011, Netflix did a thing called Chaos Monkey. And this is, the, let's say, the point zero where the today known chaos engineering, let's say, was pioneered or created and the Chaos Monkey as you can see on the bill, on the picture, was um, a tool which uh, yeah, randomly shuts down servers or VMs. And a little bit later, uh, Netflix created the Simeon Army. The what Cars Monkey was a was a, a tool inside this software suite. There were other um, other uh, tools or software available for card engineering, like I don't know a thing that shuts down the whole availability zone on, on AWS. So Chaos Monkey or Simon Army was focused on AWS because Netflix did run their services there at this time. So that's why I created the, the this um, yeah software suite, which is I think it was 2012 donated to open source and yeah mm. can still be used today. <coughs> And in 2012, Martin Fowler, I think he's also well known on the development scene, created a, or had a book and he created a, a phrase or a wording called Phoenix servers. It's similar to the Chaos Monkey or Netflix principle. And he stated it that he think about uh, uh, someone in the data center with a baseball bat or chainsaw or water pistol and destroying all the servers and um, the assessment on the outcome uh, how long it would be for the operations team to recover. And the outcome or the idea behind it is that um, servers uh, should be like a phoenix, should raise regularly rising from the ashes and not be running five years. I think this is also what we call today um, 
mutable or ephemeral systems. So there should be not be modified. There should be spin up and do a purpose and not running five years. This is the, the Phoenix uh, servers, um, what Martin Fowler yeah, created in his book. Uh, and then 2014, um, there was the, uh, the first, let's say, job, was, which was created by Netflix, the chaos engineer, like a system engineer or a DevOps engineer. And that day it was chaos engineer to today. And this was, yeah, somehow pioneered by, by uh, Netflix, this role. Okay, and um, when we look at history, let's look at today, what's happening since then. Um, today, uh, the chaos engineering methodology is a pillar of all the well architected frameworks, for example, AWS, Azure. So it's a really important part of it, and it should be considered as, as a key technology or key methodology which should be implemented when you're adopting cloud. Um, we, said we have conferences, own conferences just for chaos engineering. We have the chaos conf, uh, I think it was is, is done by Gremlin. Um, we have the chaos carnival, we have con 42, and I think maybe I missed some, but I think there's other big freeze. If I missed some, please write it in the comments. Mm. We have, uh, because we're in the cloud native space, we have CNCF adoption for sure um, with Kubernetes, also for sure. Um, we have two incubating projects here. It's Chaos Mesh and Litmus Chaos. And um, yeah, there's some other um, tools around. But uh, what is chaos engineering really? When you look at principles of chaos, it states that um, chaos engineering is the discipline of experimenting on a system in order to build confidence in the system's capability to withstand turbulent conditions in production. Easy said, all right? Next page. But what does experimenting really mean with this sentence in our mind? Um, it means it's controlled fault injection into a system or service that, for sure, as we wrote their production in, in capital letters or in bold letters, that impacts functionality of the system or service and with a fault or this, which is likely to occur in the real world. That's basically the. Um, the, can you go back, please? <laughs> the, the, what the, does it mean experimenting? And now you can uh, see some things around. And yeah, if you see at the goats, what are the goats of uh, chaos engineering? And now you can go, please. Um, it's uh, first, um, we will identify weaknesses. So identify and address um, single points of failures early. So uh, does our whole website goes down when we uh, just shut down one VM, for example? That's a clear weakness and should be addressed. Yeah. We will build uh, the goals, build confidence. So we should embrace failures. We should break the system. We should apply chaos principles continuously to build confidence that system can break. We will gain experience or increase exp or gain experience <clears throat> uh, with uh, chaos engineering. We um, we will be proactive. We will practice log analytics uh, or log analysis on our applications or systems. We will um, get more familiar with monitoring tools. We, we will recognize outage patterns. We will um, determine root cause and mitigate it accordingly because we have experience with system outages. And we also learn how to uh, access the impact. And we increase, uh, as the last goal, we will increase resiliency of our application service system, whatever you call it. Um, we will... Um, uh, install guardrails and um, have a graceful mitigation. And that's why with this, all these um, levels before, the experience, confidence, and um, identify weaknesses, we will um, minimize the blast radius of uh, outages. And we will build immunity. You go, next slide. And what are the benefits of chaos engineering? Mm. When, you look <clears throat> when you look at the state of chaos engineering, I think it's from 2021, from Gremlin, I think there was no version for 2022, so I took this one. Um, the top three benefits or the key um, benefits um, what teams reported is increased availability of services. We have reduced MTTR, so mean time to repair. And we have also, uh, sorry, not increased for sure, reduced or decreased um, MTTR, mean time to repair. And also really important, we have a decreased or a reduced mean time to detection of a fault or an error or an issue. So, and when we see that teams who run frequently run cast engineering experience, they have a more than 
or 99.9% .9 of availability in their services. So if you adopt to cache engineering, then you will get more deep into your system. You will uh, learn your system. You identify the weaknesses, as we said. And um, yeah, all these um, things, the experience you learn with the log analysis, the, the, how the system reacts in certain cases, we have a reduced MTTR and MTTD. And that's, uh, yeah, when you adopt chaos engineering. Okay, next slide. Okay, and now we learned a bit what is chaos engineering. Uh, if you have some questions, just drop it in the chat for now. Um, let's go with the uh, key principles. Mm. On there's our website, the principles of chaos. If you look at them, we have um, this five um, key principles defined. So um, the key principles build a hypothesis around steady state behavior. We have very real world events. We run experiments in uh, production. We will automate experiments to run uh, continuously, and we will minimize uh, the blast radius. And when we look at each of them, so build a hypothesis around the steady state behavior. We should focus on, on, on measurable outputs of the system rather than internal attributes. So the overall system output, the error rates, the latency percentiles, the, the response time, the whatsoever, this is a steady state. And this we can monitor, and this is a interested or re representing our steady state from where we go and start our experiments. So, and we should focus on really on those system behavior patterns during the experiment, monitoring this um, steady state. Um, very real world event, any event uh, that uh, is capable of disrupting our steady state, so changing our metrics uh, is a potential um, variable or a potential chaos experiment. We sh uh, should consider um, experiments that uh, do hardware failures like servers dying or software failures, container rebooting, container killing. Um, this is uh, events that can happen in the real world and this should be considered as um, our chaos experiments should be, should be go with the first step. Yeah? We should definitely run experiments in production. That's why we said before, we should embrace the culture of um, injecting failures and should break the system because later you will see it happens anyway and should run um, the experiment in production, as I said, because also when we deploy our, for example, our environments with uh, infrastructure as code or everything the same, something is always different. Huh? And that's traffic patterns and users on the live system. And this we don't normally, we don't have in QA or dev. So, the sampling, the real world traffic from production is really important uh, on the measurements, which we set in a steady state. So we should definitely uh, do it in production and that um, minimize the blast radius, which we will cover later. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, sorry. Um, also, we should um, guarantee um, authenticity of our experiments and this we can only do in production. So. We should, we should clearly can do it and also in QA or dev, yeah, but the real experiments um, should be done in production. Um, we should automate our, um, our uh, or run continuously and automate our chaos experiment. When you implement chaos engineering, sure you build your confidence, you gain your experience, um, you can run your experiments um, manually, but when you gain more experience, more confidence, then uh, Chaos engineering should be automated, and that's the way to go, as described on the page. And minimizing the blast radius. Um, basically, when we experiment in production, we can, we will cause unnecessary uh, customer pain. So maybe we have when we have a microservice um, technology, we should not experimenting on all microservices. So we should um, should um, make guardrails which part of the system we want to test. And there should be a short-term um, negative impact, but it should be minimized and controlled. That's the point of chaos engineering, injecting controlled chaos and not pure chaos. Okay, and what's the practice? How you implement um, chaos engineering? Basically, as we said before, you define a steady state or you look at the steady state and define hypothesis. And the measurable output is the hypothesis and that's the normal behavior. 
and when something changed, the steady state will change and we will um, cover um, uh, anomalies in our um, application availability or system VMs whatsoever. And when we um, implement the experiment, yeah, we will monitor and analyze the, uh, the, the behavior, we will mitigate it, we will improve our system, and then we again have a hypothesis and run it all over again. And to make it an um, example, for example, we could say we have an application that is a, um, connecting to a key vault. The application, for example, uh, reads a secret to connect to its backend, which is a database. And we could say a hypothesis, we can monitor the connection is there, this is our steady state. Everything is okay, we have all the requests, everything is good. And then we introduce the experiment, which cuts off the access to the key vault, so no more, no more um, secret for the database available. Then we should say, okay, our application will cache the secret for 24 hours, for example, and then nothing should happen. This is our hypothesis, and um, our experiment will run. And we recognize when we do the, the experiment, which cuts off the keyboard from access, or the application cuts, cuts the application off from the keyboard, we will recognize that uh, our application immediately dies. For example, the container will crash, uh, the users cannot access the web front end anymore. So we have to analyze what's happening and we see, ah, okay, we have no secret cache in start, for example, or we don't want it, could be also outcome. Then the hypothesis should be the application should die, depends always on your point of view. And we should then improve on the outcome together. And then we will again run the chaos experiment and go on, go on. That's in. Um, oh, wait, so, so <laughs> not so fast. And yeah, at the end, and what's the outcome or what's the end is the harder it is to disrupt the steady state, the more confidence we have in our system. Um, the weaknesses are uncovered and uh, we have a target to improve uh, our um, manifest and system at large. So that's the um, outcome of the practice. Now you can go. At last, um, there's a the good quote, I think, uh, was introduced by this fire chief, Mike Birch. And with chaos engineering, or with, as we know, we all um, are working in IT and um, we don't choose the moment when it, uh, when it when there's an outage, the moment chooses always us. And the good thing on this on this phrase is that you only choose how prepared you are when it does. So that's why it does. So that's why the firefighters they they train on on how to put out a fire with no people harm, that they are trained in the situations, and we can do the same as IT guys or as DevOps or application developers. We can be prepared for our system when as an outage, and uh, so that. Uh, we are not choosed by the moment or surprised by the moment. Okay, now we can go on. Mm. Without the knowledge, we will take a brief look at the Azure Chaos Studio. <clears throat> so um, Chaos Studio is a, a managed offering or managed service by Microsoft or Azure, which has a deep ARM integration. That means you can deploy all the stuff or all resources you need for Chaos um, Engineering on Azure with um, ARM templates, with Bicep or uh, Terraform. So the tool of your choice. As I said before, it's a pillar of the well, uh, Azure well architected framework. Um, as of now, today, it's public preview since I think November, 2021. But uh, I think they released that it will change in April and at the moment, there's also no pricing available. So let's see what will come there. There will be a pay-as-you-go pricing on experiment execution, I think they wrote, but we have to see. And basically, what is the care studio is orchestrates fault injection into Azure resources, just easy set. And uh, we also have a private um, option to make with private resources via VNet injection. So as I said, it's a deep um, integration into Azure. More with ARM. Okay, next slide, please. The key or the, the core um, or the most used um, types are faults here. We have two types of faults and we have service direct faults. They run directly against Azure resources and uh, don't need installation. 
and we have the agent based faults for which needs the installation of an agent. Basically, uh, for VM workload or compute workload, we will use the agent based faults. Um, we have fault providers. Uh, we will take a look later. And we have the fault library, which um, defines a library from Azure, which faults are available for injection on services. Next slide, please. And um, the resources we are deploying, or which we are um, the use in the portal, we have targets. Targets is needed for, uh, for Azure Care Studio to onboard resources where uh, cows or experiments or faults can run. And a uh, child resource of a target is a capability. This enables a particular fault for a source. This is like a, a, a security mechanism built in an Azure Care Studio that you have to onboard the target, for example, the key vault, and you have to add the capability to the key vault, which experiment can run there. So not that you execute accidentally wrong experiments on targets. So this is a security mechanism built in. And we have the experiment describes the faults to run on the resource or to run against. So which faults on which resource and when, basically. OK. And here uh, we have a short look at the experiment. Um, one second. We have the logic block on the right side on blue, defines how and when. Uh, the logic bl uh, block consists, or the array consists of steps. Steps, uh, as you see here, step one, step two, they run one after other to create, uh, you can create um, depending tasks and you can create really a, um, a lot of uh, complex experiments if you want. And in the steps, we have branches, they run at the same time. So, this is a good factor to create good uh, experiments. And uh, we have the selector, which is defines basically the target. So we can use a group, we can use a scale set, a keyword. We'll look at it later. Next slide, please. And here is, a, let's say, bicep code for the experiment. It is, um, you define on the slide, you, uh, you define the cars to the target with the ID. So this bicep and in the array steps um, is also an array of branches. So that means you can configure more. So we have here the uh, ak 4 access denied as example, which uh, turns on the firewall on the keyboard to the, um, disallow public access. And we have here the, the, the name, which is a um, special syntax from the fault provider, uh, fault library, sorry. You can take a look later. So you have to use this URN and the type uh, is also coming from the library. So you have to always to look which fault uh, needs which name and which type. But this is basically the code for a simple chaos experiment with bicep. Okay, next please. Um, yeah, permissions and security. Um, then we have three layers uh, integrated in Azure Chaos Studio. We have the um, Azure AD, so role-based access control. We can define with ABAC who can create faults, who can execute faults, the typical stuff which we know from Azure. We have uh, system managed identities on the experiment. So whenever you create the experiment in, in the car studio, uh, it will create a system managed identity. And what we have to do with this is we have to assign the, the recommended roles or roles to um, the Azure resources, the fault or the experiment to run against. If we stick with our um, example of the key vault, uh, we will assign the key vault contributor, I think it is, to the system managed identity in order that the that the um, the experiment or the fault can disable the firewall. Um, and the, the third or the, yeah, the third layer of security is the resource onboarding, which I described before. We have to really onboard the target and enable the capability as a security layer of uh, the uh, Azure Care Studio. And there's one specialty with, with agent, uh, agent installed on VMs or VM scale sets, they will create or they will need a user site identity. So we have to create the identity before and assign this user site identity or user managed identity to the agent and um, in order to execute these um, faults on this resources. 
Okay. Gone. I think then I was really fast today. <laughs> we could take a look if there are questions and we could uh, take a look in the Azure portal if we are interested. Here's the, um, the Azure Chaos Studio um, um, documentation on Azure. And what we here have a good documentation and in the reference, we have this fault providers, which basically describes which services at the moment are supported. And what we can see here is um, we have Azure Cache for Redis, we have DNS, we have domain names, we have, uh, sorry here, compute, sorry, it's VM, I was wrong. Uh, compute virtual machines here, which need the agent. Um, we have our machines for the machines. Uh, we have uh, AKS, which will need um, Chaos Mesh. This we will showcase in um, the next uh, episode. Uh, we have Cosmos DB, we have Keyboard, and we have security groups, uh, network security groups. These are the possible um, fault targets which are supported as of now. And in the fault library, we have around 30 of, um, 30 of um, faults. For example, we can inject time delay, we can inject CPU pressure, we can uh, make a time change. I think it's about on Microsoft agents on virtual machines. And here you can also see the URN type. So this we need for our infrastructure as code. And the other was the, I think it's not here, but when we look at the dinner access here, the fault type is continuous. There's also always an example there. So for key vault, uh, we have, oh, sorry. Okay, go here a bit. We have free, I think we can deny access. We can disable certificates or we can increment certificate versions. But I think um, the last two increment certificate version and disable certificate are only available when you use the, the preview Azure portal and not the normal. So we only have in the, in the default portal, we have only the deny access available. And yeah. Uh, preview limitations, uh, you can check it if you want. I think there are always some limitations on Windows, as we know. But more interesting are the service limits. We can um, have pair experiments, we can have nine branches, we can only have four steps as now. So we can uh, four steps after the other and nine in parallel the branches. Um, we can only run, let our action run 12 hours. Uh, uh, yeah, that's it. You can check the, 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 the limits if you're interested. Okay. Um, then let's take a look at the portal. So this is the, the Chaos Studio um, preview still, as we talked about. So here we have the targets uh, pane, targets view. And then we only will see um, resources which are possible to onboard to Azure Chaos Studio. So, and uh, as we can see here that the, my key vault so I already have is um, enabled as a service direct target. And uh, the agent base is not applicable here. So, so we are really easy to do. And we go and manage actions. Okay, they are also still here. Maybe they changed it today or yesterday. Um, we have to, uh, activate this capability on that target in order to execute this uh, experiment as as I said, it's designed as a security um, level uh, integrated in Azure Chaos Studio. Okay, and when we, uh, when we see here, we have our access denied um, experiment. This is here, say it's the same code. We will do um, on this Chaos target, we will do a, uh, deny access, type continuous, and the duration say we do it for 10 minutes. But before we go uh, on those, um, on this experiment, we go on the keyboard and we will go on the secrets pane. I hope I have access. Yes, so here I have my secret. I can read my super secret secret. I can read this and also the network configuration of this uh, keyboard will say that is uh, allow from all networks. When I go now back in the uh, resource group, I can see that the Chaos experiment is a real Azure resource. So it will be placed in my resource group where the target is more a global resource and we don't have um, any resource created for this on, 
on uh, the Azure Resource Group or Azure Resource Manager. So I go here and I, I can start my start my experiment and then it will change the start of pre-processing and check if everything is okay. And you can see here that I started the experiment without enabling the capability. So that's why it's failed. We could also do that now, but yeah, we want to see a green button. It's more, it's better. So now it's running and it will take some time for sure, but I will go on the keyboard and check the networking. Okay, it's, it's still on, on our public access. Like I said, it will take some seconds. Let's see, secret, I still have access. Okay, it's running. I can see here my step, my branch or my action is deny access. I can also see on which um, target is running. So it's on my AK, AKV chaos demo is, is running. But now we should finally see that the change the network. Now the firewall has changed to allow public access only from special virtual network and IP addresses. And when I go on secrets, I say, and I refresh the firewall, so on and the client IP is not authorized. So basically that's a really simple uh, experiment and, but it could uh, be helpful to, for example, see how your application will react when there's no more access to secrets or the, you could rotate the certificate or disable the certificate and see how the application gateway is. So for example, happening. So with a small, simple, uh, simple keyboard experiment, you can do a lot of stuff, I think. And yeah, let's see how Microsoft goes on there. I think at the moment, the fault library is, oops, sorry, is here. Um, uh, I think there should be more providers somehow soon when it goes GA, GA and then let's yeah, see the pricing and the library is okay, I guess. Okay, at the end, I think um, I added some useful links uh, when there are no more questions, I can talk in the meantime about this. So here's an interesting, the, the Netflix Simon Army blog post from Netflix from 2011. So there you could see what's uh, in the in the Simon Army, for example, they have this Cars Gorilla, it simulates an outage of an entire availability zone when you run it and you can, yeah, you can test your system in a large scale. Here's the cloud native landscape for chaos engineering. We have Litmus and chaos, as I said, is incubating there are other tools around. And yeah, you can check the links also. I think I will post it also on GitHub in our GitHub and oh. okay. More I don't have prepared for today. So we'll stop sharing. Hey, let me questions. check again if you have some questions. Um, so if you have some, feel free to post them. Yeah, because so far, I have to go to the cinema and look at John Wick 4. So please ask your questions <laughs> fast. <laughs> no, no, I have the time. No, so no questions so far. Okay. Yeah, then anyway, um, thanks, Phil. For this nice introduction, um, yep. and seeing forward to to the second episode on uh, in April. So if you do not yet uh, register for that one, uh, move over to our meetup page, um, and also register for the second part. Um, but for does uh, uh, yeah more detail uh, demos and information on the Azure Car Studio. Yep. Okay, so. With this, I would say thanks you to everyone. Thank you to everyone. And um, I think we are